Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this month's edition of Couch Coding, Custom Upstreams in Terminus Magic. Your experts for today are Matt Cheney, co-founder here at Pantheon, and Ronan Dowling, senior software engineer, also here at Pantheon. Just a few housekeeping items to go over before we start. Please make sure you submit any questions you have during the presentation in the question window. We want to answer as many of your questions during the presentation as possible, so make sure you keep those coming. Also, the session will be recorded, and the recording will be made available to everyone later this week. I'd now like to turn it over to Matt and Ronan. Hi, everyone. Thank thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, I'm Ronan Dowling. I'm an engineer here at Pantheon, and I was the tech lead on the Custom Upstreams project. This was a fun project to work on, and uh, it was exciting to bring this new feature to our to our customers. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the platform, and I'm sure all of you are, uh, the you know that the one-click updates are a pretty uh, key part of what we offer. The ability to manage uh, those upstreams, the Drupal or WordPress, uh, simply uh, not have to worry about downloading and reinstalling and updating when it, whenever there's a new release, is, uh, is 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 a key value for us. Uh, we've built an entire workflow around it, um, and it, it really saves people a lot of time. Uh, but what we found, and what you probably found as you've used it, is that while it's fantastic for keeping your core Drupal or WordPress up to, WordPress up to date, it, it doesn't do much for all of your custom and contributed modules and plugins and themes and uh, all the things that make your site your site. It, it really just does, it really just lets you do um, WordPress and Drupal. Uh, and if you're an agency or if you're a, a a large organization or an educational institute, you're going to have dozens, sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands of sites uh, that all share a common code base, not just core Drupal or WordPress, but a set of, of contributed themes, um, plugins, modules, custom code that is common across a lot of your sites. What ends up happening, especially if you're an agency, is you build you build what basically becomes your own custom distribution based on top of Drupal or WordPress and you start all of your sites that way. Uh, so we wanted to be able to take this feature we already have and to extend it to those people who weren't getting a lot of value out of it because they were using their own custom distributions and give them the ability to maintain their own version of Drupal or WordPress, uh, their own packages, packages that they could have the same one-click updates across all of their sites. It lets you. It will let you uh, spin up new sites uh, based on a common uh, base, um, and then keep those all, all of those sites updated at, in sync at your own pace, uh, just like it, as though it, you know you were tracking uh, core Drupal or core WordPress. So what's what we did? We created custom upstreams. They take the place of our our core upstreams. They you, they allow you to maintain your own. Your own upstream that you can that you can apply. Um, we we got a lot of agencies using this now. Um, we've got a lot of great feedback. Uh, there's uh, there's really a lot of benefit to it. It is free of charge. If you don't have access to us, just sign up uh, for Pantheon for Agencies. If you're an agency, it'll be completely free. And if you are an agency but you haven't heard of this or you haven't used it, go over to the Upstreams tab in your organization, and you will see a button that says enable it for my agency and it'll get turned on immediately and you'll have immediate access to, uh, to this feature uh, and I uh, hope you guys do that if you haven't already and uh, get a lot of value out of, it, out of it and I'm going to turn it over to Matt to give you a demo of what it looks like. Awesome. Well, hello everyone. Lovely to, to be here uh, fresh off of WordCamp US in Nashville which was an excellent excellent event, uh, but now back in San Francisco and looking to show off sort of this feature that Ronan was talking about. As he mentioned, it's a freely available feature to all of our agency partners. And if you don't have access to the feature now, you can sign up for Pantheon for Agencies, tell us a little bit about your agency, and we'll go ahead and enable it for your organization account. This is something that we have seen sort of since the beginning of Pantheon as being valuable to people with custom upstreams. But it wasn't until recently that we've actually gone ahead and make it a sort of self-serve in the UI kind of option. And so I'm going to sort of show you off how that's going to look and on the, on the dashboard side, talk a little about the use cases, and then get a little more into sort of some of the more advanced scripting. Like Rona was saying, some folks have a thousand uh, sites that are sort of implemented this way. And I think overall on the web, 
we're seeing more and more trends that really look like the biggest web projects are the ones that, you know, are you doing multiple sites at once? That um, on Pantheon, some of our large accounts are actually accounts that have multiple sites. And one interesting statistic I heard at WordCamp US is that sort of the average Fortune 500 company is looking, has over a hundred different sites as part of their organization. So if you're an agency sort of looking to, to do bigger work and work with some of the larger kind of companies, these are companies that are already are managing dozens, if not hundreds of different web properties and using a technology like custom upstreams really can give your agency a leg up in bidding and sort of fulfilling that kind of work that, you know, part of the reason I'm sure we all use open source software is that we're not looking to sort of reinvent the wheel every time we go out to do a project. We have plenty of open source modules and plugins to help accomplish that on a sort of feature level. I think custom upstreams is sort of an extension of that kind of, 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 reuse, of reusability that says if we're able to pitch a project where a lot of the components are the same, let's just make that have one Git repo and let's actually then let you instantiate different sites. So to sort of show you how it works, um, I'll sort of walk you through what's going on. Um, this is our uh, organizational dashboard. If you're an agency, uh, it probably looks something like yours you know, with you know, obviously different kind of content. And the, t the, the tab that obviously we want to start with is the actual upstreams tab. Um, as Ronan says, if you haven't actually turned this on yet, this is going to be a button that you need to enable. We, uh, we want you to click the button and check out the documentation. We uh, very much have spent time really dialing in what this kind of, uh, of, of stuff's going to look like. So there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities. Um, to actually set up an upstream, and you'll see I have one already created for Drupal 8 but we'll go ahead and create a WordPress one. To actually add an upstream, what you do is you sort of, you know, name your upstream, you know, custom WordPress upstate, press upstream. And then what you need to do is actually have a either public accessible or private accessible um, uh, rep uh, you, uh, repository for, for your site. So typically the way that we want you to work with custom upstreams is that at Pantheon, we sort of provide default custom upstreams for Drupal and WordPress. And you'll see that if you go to sort of the Pantheon systems GitHub, we actually are sort of providing the latest version of WordPress as part of a repo. Same thing for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. And we provide that repo because we wanna make sure that the code that you have when you say start WordPress on Pantheon is the correct code and will work perfectly on the platform. Uh, in order to sort of extend that, uh, what we usually encourage folks to do is actually fork that repo. So this is a custom upstream WordPress repo that I've forked off of WordPress. So this has all of the WordPress goodies that Pantheon's already providing, but it also has some additional stuff that I can add, you know, new plugins, a starter theme, other kinds of, of, of libraries, maybe even a sort of, you know, version of React and some, you know, front end, front end kind of decouple tooling. You know, the possibilities are really endless because all you're really telling Pantheon is that you have a specific, um, you know, get, get, uh, get URL. So we'll go ahead and take that URL, cruise back over to our, uh, our repository info and add it right there. And then we get to select our framework that just tells Pantheon the back end, this is a WordPress site, um, you know, a custom upstream for WordPress to help our agency do faster and better work. And then we'll go ahead and actually create that. So not that many kind of options. You'll see it automatically has a logo for us and has actually given us that kind of information. Once we go, go back into the settings, we have a, uh, an initial option that we can check to actually decide if we want the site to start in SFTP mode or Git mode, uh, sort of up to you. And then we also have an option to sort of delete the upstream if we no longer need it but the delete button is smart. It knows if there's any sites that have actually been created from it. So if we were to go back and try to, um, you know, go to, go to our, our other upstream, it's going to say, look, we have seven sites still using it. We can't actually delete it until we've, uh, we sort of dealt with those sites. So that's sort of part of, part of what's going on. Um, but then once we actually have that upstream created, it's a simple matter to like create a new site and go ahead and say, you know, migrate, WordPress site 
And assuming that we've, 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 we've set it up per organization, we'll have access to those options. Upstreams are tied to specific organizations. So if you work with multiple agencies, or if you're working with a university that has an organization account, to access the custom upstreams requires that you have access uh, to the organization. But no big deal. And you'll see here when we actually start up our, our site, we have access to, to do our example upstream or just do the one we just made. And I'll go ahead and deploy that. So what's happening behind the scenes is that, you know, Pantheon's going ahead and saying, look, we know we have that custom upstream. Let's go ahead and, um, and pull it down from custom upstream WordPress. So it's doing a checkout of all of this code and it's setting up the site like it would a normal Pantheon site. But the key is that it now has that sort of association between the site that we're creating and the upstream. And the reason why this is important is that when we actually do the update functionality, like Ronan was mentioning earlier, where you'll get a yellow box that says, um, you know, this, uh, this site is out of date, please update. The way that we get those messages internally is that we actually go ahead and look at the Git history of the upstream. So here's one that we set up before, it's called Elderberry. You'll see that it has an update that I made that says update to panels 4.2, it's a Drupal module. We sort of updated the new version of it. And if we actually go ahead and look at the, um, uh, the actual update, you'll see that the last uh, commit here, the latest commit, is actually uh, from me, and it says update to panels 4.2. So the way that it's actually getting this specific update is by uh, is is from that that URL or from from that you know, that commit history, and that Pantheon is smart. It'll check uh, every you know little bit to see are there new commits that are in like the GitHub or the Bitbucket or the Git repository that are no longer they're not in the like child site, and if so, it'll actually give you that kind of update message. Um, You'll see here, if you've used this feature before, uh, we do cache this information just for performance reasons. So we actually do tell you how long ago that we actually checked, so a few seconds ago. And then you can actually initiate a check uh, on your own if you've updated uh, recently. And the idea is that if you actually want to bring this change into your site, you can hit apply updates in the dashboard just like, just like you would do for any other uh, kind of update. So we just finished our deploying our custom WordPress update. We'll go ahead and just look in the dashboard. It's you know starting off um, with uh, you know just a, just a new Pantheon site as we do. We actually have to install WordPress, of course, uh, but we're starting off with a code base that is sort of our own, and we can tell that by looking at about this site. It'll actually show us that we're running a custom upstream and provide us a link to actually check that information out. Now. Why as an agency or as an organization might we want this? I think so, I've done a lot of training with different agencies uh, around the world and I can sort of talk about a few different buckets that I think are helpful for agencies. One bucket that makes a lot of sense for agencies is if they're looking at a web project with a large university, a large multinational brand, or even just a nonprofit that has the need to have 10 different sites that sort of all look and work the same that we'll see agencies actually pitch as part of the work that they're doing to say, look, we'll make you 10 sites that are all the same. Our deliverable will be a uh, repository that includes you know, the custom plugins and themes and modules that are needed to make all, to sort of base those 10 sites. And then we'll actually on Pantheon create the 10 different sites based in this upstream. We'll get them all set up with the content, go through the, the process, but then hand that over to a client or continue with ongoing work where the process of actually updating those 10 sites is just update the upstream first and push out the updates. And this is similar to like, you know, sort of more some, you know, more, maybe more old school kind of multi-site approaches. Uh, we can talk in the QA if people have specific sort of comparisons, but our opinion of this is that the way you need to handle multiple sites is by having each site have its own PHP database file system, isolated environment. That's good for performance reasons. That's good for security reasons. And with sort of the containerized technology on Pantheon, there's no reason not to do this. Individual sites should be individual, full stop, you know, 
putting them together only invites problems, and we certainly don't want any of those. And that's a, so that's a good model. You're an agency. You can use custom ops streams to pitch your clients on you want n number of sites that all work the same. Great. We have a really quick, fast, efficient, scalable, secure way to do that. Second thing we see a lot of agencies do is sort of create a sort of quick start or a template kind of system. So what might happen is that you know you're working with uh, with with say Drupal or WordPress and you're always installing you know the Genesis theme or you're always installing panels and page manager and C tools. These are just part of how your agency does business. And we see a lot of agencies that already do this informally or formally within their agency by saying, look, we're going to choose these plugins and these modules and this starter theme for all of our sites. Huge organizational advantages from doing that because you can train your staff and developers on using that common framework. If you revisit a project you know, in a year or a year and a half later, you'll actually have familiarity with how things are built. And you can sort of, if you're doing maintenance and support for, for your customers, having more sites that are more similar, there's just a lot of efficiencies there. And so we see organizations say, look, I want to start from a higher level. Instead of just saying, look, I'm going to uh, you know, start with just default WordPress every time and then go through a couple days of like default configuration, let's just go ahead and actually put all that stuff in there from the get-go and start you know, quicker. That saves time. You're saving you know, 10 hours, 20 hours of setup on each project. It also gives you the ability to more quickly sort of spin up demo sites for purposes of um, you know, prototyping or trying new things. Um, and sort of on that, you know, a sort of related use case we see is that sometimes organizations are actually doing quick proof of concepts or even just demo sites for like sales or, or, or training purposes. So if you are in the business of training or, or selling with sort of showing off a site, you can actually use Pantheon to quickly spin up a demo site, show it off to your customer, let them or their developers play with it if they want, and then you have that sort of site you can use later for, for more purposes. It's, it's a very quick way, way, way to go. Um, and then the, uh, the other kind of use case we see with, um, with the custom upstreams is just sort of uh, is, is a way that you can have as an agency a sort of more productized or vertical specific experience. That we definitely see agencies are increasingly focused on one kind of, you know, kind of customer healthcare, education, government. And being able to sort of put together an upstream that like already has some of those default functionality, that already has a page building tooling, already has you know, full accessibility uh, or SEO kind of, kind of plugins enabled, allows you to sort of credibly pitch people as the experts in that specific space. That if you can walk into a meeting or you can start a project saying we already have an accessible and SEO friendly sort of you know, stack ready to go, you are like way better than like other people might be pitching it. And as a development on the technical side, you're also in a way cleaner and easier to use place. And I think a lot of the reasons why we are using Drupal or WordPress as agencies is because of that reusability and predictability of the feature set. Custom upstreams is just an extension um, on top of that. And what we see is then you, you end up with, in some cases, more than one upstream as well. Um, we allow you to have you know, several different upstreams for what you want to do. You can have Drupal WordPress ones, multiple different WordPress ones, and you can really play around with, with how all of this works. And then, of course, once you have that sort of set up in the, in the uh, dashboard, you can do really interesting things like filter by just the specific upstreams that you're doing. So you can just see the one that we did. And then we also have integrated this code status option. So we can actually go ahead, you know, in this case, our site's up to date because we just installed it. But if you're looking at, you know, sort of a, a, an older upstream, you can actually see that, uh, you know, this site has three, three, three sites that, uh, that actually need to be immediately updated. Um, and so that's something that you can actually see where are the updates they need them and et cetera. So we see, we see a number of agencies that sort of base their business model on providing maintenance and support long term to customers. A really easy way to provide that is to say, okay, Here's, you know, custom upstream will like, we'll move our clients onto or, or, or start our clients with. And then our sort of maintenance process is to go into the dashboard, click the upstream, click the ones that need updates, and then run through the process. And so this all sort of works decently well with inside of your agency or with inside of your um, uh, organization. And, you know, this is a cool feature. We've had this for a while, as, as Rona mentioned. I hope a number of you on the call 
have actually uh, have been playing around with this. But I think one of the things that we wanted to dive a bit more into today is sort of some of the more advanced kind of options for this. Because one of the things that's, that, you know, is, is definitely the case is that when we're only dealing with 10 sites, 20 sites, no big deal. Um, using the web UI is pretty clear and easy. But when we're looking at doing this at scale, or if we're just looking at doing this in a, in a, a CI or automated kind of way, we're going to actually want to start writing scripts to actually do some of these operations. And that gets us in to Terminus. So Terminus, of course, is our command line tooling for Pantheon. 100% recommend everyone have this installed. It's a, you know, a very powerful way to do stuff with Pantheon. Save you time on the sort of you know, day to day, but it'll allow you to do scripting like we'll show in a minute that allows you to, to do stuff that like literally would you know, be very difficult to do, to do otherwise. So some of the commands that I think are helpful to do, um, one really sort of uh, easy uh, command that folks might have questions around is actually sort of changing of the upstreams. A common, you know, if you sort of believe me that having many of your sites on the same upstream is a time saver, but you're sitting there as an agency with 20 sites that are all on just say WordPress or all on Drupal, but maybe have some of these similarities and you're like, oh, I wish I had set up the upstream before. Never fear, it's definitely possible to say, I'm gonna go create the upstream that I want with the common code and then switch the upstreams from the, child, the sites that are like running like just normal WordPress to running like your agency's WordPress. And we do a little bit of magic with Git behind the scenes just to make sure that the upstream code is compatible with the site code. But if you have used the same plugins and the same modules, it will more or less work. And so if you are looking to sort of adopt more formally this model, Terminus site upstream set is actually the only way that you can change the upstream. This isn't something you can do in the dashboard uh, and is uh, definitely recommended to sort of bring more sites under the, under the fold. Additionally, we have full support for all the other kind of upstream options that you might want. Um, you can get, you know, the list of available updates. You can apply the updates. You can get, you know, status of, of the different sites. And these are commands that we use a lot in our different kind of scripting. We have some really cool sort of examples doing auto update that I'll talk about in a minute where you can actually automatically update your sites. And a lot of the logic that's going into this is actually doing things like checking to see if there's updates available and if there are applying them. And this is sort of how you, how you sort of get this going. So to sort of, you know, talk about it, I can, I'm going to sort of crib a little bit from uh, some of the examples that we have using Terminus. You'll see that there's uh, some applying updates is sort of our, our, our first example. And that's because we see a lot of people, if you have 20, 30, 40 sites, or you just have 10 sites and just want to have a good process going, there's ways to really sort of use Terminus to actually automatically update those sites. So one thing that I sort of do is uh, write little bash scripts from time to time. And this is sort of one script that I wrote that's designed, um, this is, you know, uh, more of like pseudo kind of code. I think this, some of the, the site name stuff might be, need to be refined a little bit. But the logic here is what you want. You're gonna specify your Terminus user address, so this is me, and specify your organization ID. That's uh, up in the, uh, the UUID in the, in the URL uh, right here. And then what you can do is specify the, uh, the list, and then you have to log into Terminus, of course. But then you can specify the list of site names that you actually want to target for this specific script. So we have an operation called terminus org site list that actually will just give you a list of all the sites in your organization. So if you're just looking to update all the sites in your organization to the um, latest upstream, this will actually do it. But some of the things that I see people do is sort of try to be more, more deliberate. So you can do things with, you know, terminus or site list um, where you might actually, you know, only do the sites that are like running WordPress or only do the sites that, you know, maybe lit has a certain kind of, of uh, upstream. Or my personal favorite is I actually like to specify a tag that'll actually be the update kind of tag. You see in this case, it says update me. So what I'll do is on this site, I'll say, look, well, you know, Maybe I don't want all the sites done because some are still in development. I don't want them auto updating, but those ones are. And I'll go ahead and sort of add this update me tag. 
So what Terminus can do is it can say, okay, go ahead and query the organization. Just show me which sites have the update tag. And then actually loop through each of the sites. And this is the kind of then, you know, work that we end up doing. So we'll say, look, let's force the site into Git mode because we need Git mode to apply the updates. Let's do a Terminus update supply to actually apply it directly to dev. Let's deploy it over to the test environment. And then um, let's do a quick backup before we actually do anything to the live environment. And then let's deploy this live. And with like this, like not that long, with this 21 lines of code, we're actually able to iterate through every site that we have on Pantheon with a specific tag, and then automatically force those to be updated. Now, this is sort of a little bit of a YOLO kind of, a, kind of thing. We do have the backups, of course, but you know, this is the kind of foundation that you can expand on. So what you might sort of want to do is say, okay, you know, add testing for sites here. So you actually might want to you know, go ahead and, and run some BHAT tests, run some performance tests, run some visual regression tests before you actually do the, do the update and make that conditional on it. Um, we also might want to do things like notify people that this, you know, that this is happening. So we can do, you know, you know, send to Slack a notification. And then we also might want to, you know, you know, send one of these, you know, send, send a final notification. And you can build this up based on your workflow. You also might not want to actually deploy live. You might want to those, you know, ping somebody in Slack when the sites are ready to be done and you can do some final human QA before you deploy live. But the idea is that this is a script that you can set up on a cron job. This is a script that you can add to a circle CI kind of environment. And this is the kind of way that we see, we see people, people working, working with this stuff. Um, and that, you know, there's sky's the limit in terms of what is possible, but I'll show you one example and then I'll let Ronan sort of do another one. Um, so, one example that is, I think, really nice when we're actually talking about upstreams is using a sort of CI solution to actually review uh, the sites on a regular basis. So there's a, a couple scripts we wrote. We have one for WordPress and one for Drupal that are sort of automatically updating sites based on upstream using a, a sort of continuous integration solution. So it has a script that's not going to be like that unlike what I just showed you. It's called here from the main circle. Uh, item and the idea is that it'll sort of do similar to what I showed you. It'll log in with Terminus. It'll actually create a multi-dev to do the specific testing, which is sometimes a safer way to go. Uh, and then it'll do things like, are there updates available for that specific site? If there are, then it'll go ahead and apply those updates. If it's not, then it'll just skip. And once it's applied, it actually will go ahead and be able to, you know, run on and actually wake up the multi environment, and then it's actually going to run some testing right in the right in the in the CI. So this sort of goes beyond what all, all the stuff we're talking about today, but it actually is running a visual regression test just to make sure that none of the pixels are different from the live site versus the site that it has the new updates, and assuming that the pixels are exactly the same, and all the other tests passed then it actually will go ahead and deploy, you know, merge the updates into dev, deploy them in a test, make that same backup, and then deploy them live. And this is the kind of thing that I think we see more and more agencies sort of diving into. There's a little bit of setup cost to get this working, but it um, uh, definitely can save you a lot of time. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ronan and talk about another time saver if, uh, you can use uh, with Terminus. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, this sort of sophisticated circle scripting, as Matt said, we're seeing a lot of people move to this and invest time into that kind of DevOps to make their, to, to manage hundreds, even thousands of sites very efficiently. But uh, we also found in our user reviews that a lot of people, for a lot of people, updates are still very much a human process. This is uh, not something you just always want a computer to do in the middle of the night while you're asleep. You, you know, Drupal and WordPress are wonderful, but you really need to test the updates uh, for a lot of customer sites. So it, there's, a, there's a lot of human, uh, human involvement in this, uh, but we wanted to make sure that the human process of updating a bunch of sites at once was still quite 
you know, manageable, pleasant, not literally opening up 50 tabs, going through each tab and clicking apply de to dev on each one. So we created this plugin. Terminus allows for plugins, which are, you know, they can be anything. All of the commands in Terminus uh, are written this way. So you can write your own functionality into Terminus. Um, this is a third party plugin that we created, well, first party plugin that we created. It's distributed separately. You have to download and install it. But what it does is it will apply uh, all of the updates available to dev for a list of sites that you give it. It takes uh, on standard in a list of site IDs or site names. So what that means is that you can, you can decide what the list is going to look like. We, if the tagging doesn't quite work for you, if that's not like sophisticated enough, or if you're, you know, if you need to do something a little bit more, um, uh, you know, hands-on, uh, you can generate that list of IDs whatever way you want. I've done some testing where I just keep a list, a file, a text file of IDs for sites I care about. Or what you can do is uh, Terminus will output lists of site IDs in the format it's needed. So the examples you can see here on the screen, uh, we do a Terminus site list that will list all of the sites that you have access to. We tell format list, which just outputs IDs. It doesn't tell you anything about it, but IDs. So that's exactly what we need. And then using just a bash pipe, send it to the mass update uh, command, and it will apply all of those updates for all of those sites. Uh, there's also some other um, options. You can run the update DB. You can uh, automatically merge if there are conflicts. And my favorite, of course, is dry run. So you can just run it and see what's going to happen. It won't actually do anything. That's a nice, obviously, run it first before you run it on 100 sites. Um, and then you can limit it to just if you have you know, three or four different custom upstreams, you might not want to do them all the same day. You know, you might want to spread it out so you can, so, so you can uh, limit the sites uh, so that even if your filtered list doesn't have that limit, the update uh, can, can filter those out. So this is a great way to do something quite similar to those scripts that Matt was showing, but this just really basic. It's, you know, designed to be used by a human rather than a script. You could, of course, script from it, but once you start, once you get into your scripting, you're probably, uh, you're probably going to want to do more, more sophisticated things and, and, and a looping through sites is not that hard. So, you know, you're going to break this out at that point anyway. But this is a great way if you have somebody whose job it is to um, sort of shepherd through a lot of updates. Uh, it doesn't take an awful, it takes a little command line knowledge, but, and it can, it can save an awful lot of time versus sort of trying to do each one by hand. Um, it's also, yeah, like I say, it's available on GitHub. It's open source. If it doesn't do exactly what you need, it's uh, it's a it's a good way to, to dig into uh, Terminus plugin development. And of course, send, uh, we've had a, a number of people uh, give us patches for it. So uh, feel free to contribute if it's uh, if you've got ideas for how it can be better. Um, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's basically the, a loop that looks an awful lot like the bash script we just saw. Um, but it will, uh, you know, it does some testing. It makes sure it's in dry, dry run. It, uh, it, it talks a lot so you know what's happening. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the mass updates command. Very simple, but it can be very useful if you're running more than a handful of sites. Yeah, I think that's great, Ronan. I think um, I've used this myself to do some mass updates, but I think, especially if you're like getting sort of into this, a definitely good recommendation is start out with some scripts just on your laptop, just to get a feel for how the process works. You know, do a little bit of testing with an upstream, and that you know, as you sort of move more formally in an agency, you can sort of extend our mass update or use this as a base to maybe build a more you know an even more sort of specialized version of this. Like this will only go, I think, as far as the as the dev environment. Is that? I think that's right. Yep. Yep. That's correct. So you would need to. Uh, the idea is this is to get the, everything up to date, so you can then do your testing manually, um, or you know, get your uh, client approval, whatever you need to do. There's just when there's ever whenever when there's a big uh, security update for Drupal or WordPress, you know, you know, you've got minutes to get everything ready for testing and QA and approval before. You, pushing it live. So this is just, you know, takes about 30 seconds to get everything up to the latest. And then the hard work begins. Yeah, and I've seen some agencies leverage this and actually sort of run this, this command first, and then it sort of captures the output and sends it as a Slack message, or I guess it could send it as an email to somebody saying, an update's available. All these sites are ready for human review. And you can just cut down the time it's going to take to actually get things ready to go. 
because it'll automatically copy the database from live to dev so you can review. It'll automatically apply the updates, clear the caches, and get you ready for, for what's going on. Um, and I think sort of, you know, we'll take some questions here in just, in just a minute, so please definitely put them in the chat. We can run through them. But I would say, in general, like, we think there's a lot of power in these commands. You know, we wanted to sort of, you know, run through it in the couch code and sort of show you some of the, some of the what's possible with it. But if this is something you as an agency really want to dive into, obviously we have some really great documentation on board. We have the plugin, the mass update plugin as a good example. But we're also totally available to do sort of trainings and, and work with your agency on setting this stuff up. Uh, if you're sort of newer to Pantheon, we have a Jumpstart uh, training program. It's a couple of days of, of in-depth training on a variety of topics, but it's customized to your use case. So if you're really into custom upstreams, we could spend you know, several hours setting one up for you, getting a lot of the stuff we're showing working for your specific agency use case. Or if you've already, you know, been using Pantheon for a while, but just want to like get on a call with someone for an hour or two hours to, to just, just talk custom upstreams in your use case, we're always happy to do that. Um, this is a, we think this feature is pretty cool. We make it available for free to agencies who want to do it. And uh, we're interested to hear people's questions. You know, folks, if you've used it, how did that go? Are there questions you have about using it? And uh, you know, in general, uh, you know, anything else you want to talk about? We we have some jokes too, and play some. We can play some music. Although we're, I did a video where I did a, the automatic updates, and it got taken off of YouTube because I played a bunch of like copyrighted music. So we're gonna have to just sing stuff. We can't play electronic at the moment. But anyway, uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Atusa to do some questions with everyone. On that copyright note. Um, our first question, uh, Matt, is just a follow-up to what you just mentioned, which is, uh, who do we ask specifically about scheduling one of those calls that you spoke at? Yeah, so if you are interested um, in, in scheduling a call, if you, uh, we have a number of like partner managers to, that if you're already working with somebody, uh, you know, just mail, mail for the folks you're working with. If you are, um, if, you're just, if you're just like new, we have a whole contact, uh, contact sec section. And just uh, just send us a holler and say hi. I want you know custom upstream training, and uh, we'll route you to you know we'll route you to uh, to whatever uh, folks are available. We have a, a pretty large team that trains agencies, and we're very much into helping people learn. All right, the next question, uh, Matt. This was from your demo. Um, it's on the organization dashboard. What does the status column, um, which I believe is right under code status? Uh, what is it referred to? It's empty in both the demo and on my org's dashboard. Yeah, so um, we're always improving the UI, and um, this definitely is a little confusing. Um, currently, so what works, what happens on Pantheon is that if you haven't used your site for several months, like it's, it's a dev site, you haven't done anything with it, we will put that site into what's known as a frozen state, where we'll spin down it entirely from memory and just and back it up, but have it as a put a little snowflake there. Um, and so the status indicator is something if a site has been frozen, it'll show you a little snow leaf there and let you unfreeze it if you want. Um, but it's a little confusing, I know, because it says code status and then status. It should sort of be like frozen status, but I guess with winter coming, we, we don't want to send too many like chilly vibes out there, so it's just status. But that's what it is. Uh, if, if all your sites are running, it's it's no big deal. If you see a snow leaf there, that means it's in hibernation. You can wake it up if you want. Next question. Um, on my dashboard, I don't see an add custom upstream button or the operations tab in the org sites to update multiple sites at once. I assume it's how do I get there. Um, so typically in the upstream section, you will need to um, uh, you will need to actually cl click a button to enable it, and then you should have this button here. If that's not happening for some reason, like go just file a support uh, ticket and say, hi, I'd love to have custom upstreams. Um, some people might have, need to have it manually available, uh, enabled. But typically, there will be a button here, and then you will be able to add them. Um, once you've added them, you then will be able to sort of start filtering. Once you've created them, filtering it on the side, and then you can see the code status. Any of the math updates and auto update stuff are, are sort of scripts you'd have to add later. All right. Uh, next question is on Drupal 8, is it possible to generate content types automatically upon a site creation with a custom upstream? If so, what would be your recommendation? Features, config files, switching upstreams, et cetera. Um, 
Yeah, I can take us. I'll take a swing at this because there's something else I wanted to mention that I think sort of fits that mold. Um, so one thing I've also seen agencies that do that have custom upstreams is that they want to go beyond just having just the code to start, but they want to actually have a fully installed site, like fully installed Drupal site or fully installed WordPress site to go. So one thing that we sort of see maybe happen is you create sort of a second script that's like agency Pantheon spin up script. So you might say step one is we create a site from the upstream, but step two might be we use uh, the WP CLI or we use Drush to actually install the site. Um, you can use, you can do site install with Drush and WP CLI so it automatically installs WordPress or Drupal. You could then automatically set up WordPress or Drupal to turn on different modules or load some YAML configuration file that would do the same thing. But you could do a lot of other stuff too, like you could even turn on Redis for your site, you could turn on Solar for your site, you could enable New Relic for your site, and you could like set up other kind of Quicksilver operations. So some people use custom upstreams will have a pretty advanced Git repository for new code, and then it'll have a series of 10 commands that they like sort of run as part of script to set up a new site. And that'll get you a really great best practice Pantheon site with a fully installed copy of Drupal 8 with New Relic, Redis, uh, and Solar enabled. And you could even send you, know, send you a notification when it's all done in Slack. And on that note, we uh, have an, a newer Quicksilver hook that runs when you spin up a new site. And uh, since you own the custom upstream, you can actually add Quicksilver hooks to the upstream that will get applied to every site that gets created. Uh, we don't, you know, our core upstreams don't have any hooks built in, so there's no, uh, nothing happens automatically. But uh, if you have a set of things you want to happen every time a new site is spun up, then you can add that to your upstream and those hooks will, uh, will, will fire automatically on every site based on that upstream. And if you're not familiar with Quicksilver, then I recommend you check it out. It's a very cool way to do uh, automatic things like that uh, based on actions that happen within Pantheon. And, and on that point, if you're, if you have other Pantheon.yml configurations that you want to do, like setting the version of PHP or, um, adding some of that stuff, we have a, a term, a Pantheon.upstream.yaml sort of default that you can put in your repository. So if you add one of, you know, check out the documentation on it, of course, but if you add a Pantheon upstream YAML, New sites will then inherit those kind of uh, options, but we'll have the ability to, to change them later. One of the key models of the upstream is that you do start with common code. Some people just keep the code entirely common all the time, but if you do need to change a specific site, you have your own Git repository, you can make changes, and then the upstream update will just try to figure it out from Git after that. Right, next question is, what is the best practice to deal with core updates from Pantheon when using custom upstreams? So uh, right now, there's nothing automatic. Um, so you really need to, if you're going to create your own upstream, it's sort of, uh, you get more power, but you get more responsibility. You have to, you have to maintain it yourself to some degree. Uh, you can, if you fork from GitHub, then you can use GitHub to merge in the upstream changes. Uh, if you follow, there's some directions in the documentation, but using a remote, that means you're not forking from GitHub, which also means you're not, it's not trying to push your changes back up to us when you try and do a, a, a branch, uh, a pull request, but uh, yeah, so it's basically like ma maintaining a site. Uh, you, you merge in the, the changes when they're available and then push them to the, up to your upstream repository and then they'll become available on all of your uh, other sites. So um, it is a little bit more work, uh, but you're taking that, that, that work that you would theoretically have had to do for lots of sites and reducing it down to just the one site the one repository. Yeah, it's, there's often a lot of different places that people like have to go to to sort of manage other people's code and sort of the more centralized that is just the easier we typically find it for agencies to work with. All right, um, so background on this next listener slash viewer. Um, this person is using the composer example for custom upstream. Um, and the Composer custom upstream both in GitHub. Um, and his question is, if I want to use Composer with the sites that are built from the upstream, how can I use Composer on sites that are built with custom upstreams? Yeah, I, I'll, I can start with this. Um, 
So Composer is obviously a, a technique to manage PHP packages across Drupal and WordPress sites. Not every site uses it, of course, but Drupal 8 is really pushing it as a model, and it is possible with WordPress, and some of our more advanced agency workflows sort of assume that that's what's happening. Um, there's definitely a meta kind of question that you as an agency need to ha happen, which is how do you want to manage sort of other people's code? Um, with respect to our sort of upstream technology, it's totally possible to like create a version of, uh, of WordPress or Drupal using Composer, we have some good documentation on that, and make your custom upstream sort of the starter state with that for, for that Composer um, kind, of, uh, kind of situation. Um, that means that like when a new update to Drupal or WordPress comes out, or a new plugin or module update comes out, you basically check out the upstream that has the Composer JSON, Composer Lock. You run the updates on that just that one site, commit what the what happens, and then all of the other sites sort of inherit that build artifact commit and can apply it directly. That works pretty well in cases where you have a lot of sites that have basically all the same code. So you use Composer once to sort of marshal all in one place, and then each of the site gets it. But you know, depending on where you go with Composer, there's also a world where like you don't need this technology as much if you've literally put all of your sites in Composer and they all have different kind of stuff that you could sort of take this kind of upstream script and instead of doing the upstream apply updates here, you could go ahead and do sort of a you know terminus terminus Composer kind of operation um, and actually do the Composer stuff as well. So. A lot of it depends sort of how deep and advanced you are in Composer. I think our general recommendation is to try to have people stick more to the custom upstream model that we were showing, just because it is a lot more um, recognizable and there's a lot of tooling to support you. But Composer does a great job of managing other people's code, and so you could just go with a pure Composer solution and no, not use some of this stuff. But totally a question for like sort of ultimately how you're going to do work with an agency, and that would be a great thing to sort of set up a quick hour training just to talk through options with with some of the folks that we have here uh, about what we've seen with other agencies. And one more thing on that, if you are the, the more going for the more advanced composer uh, use case and you really want to manage everything yourself and our upstream updates are just getting in your way, uh, we've had agencies trying to sort of do composer but then use one of our upstreams and then an update becomes available and they've wiped out all the code. Uh, we now provide three new uh, totally empty upstreams uh, they're public upstreams. You don't have to make a custom upstream for this. They're available to everybody. And we just, we don't, uh, we have a, a upstream YAML file in there to specify whether it's Drupal uh, or WordPress because the platform needs to know that. But um, otherwise, uh, it's totally empty and we don't push updates to it. So it means that your composer updates are what matters and you'll never see a thing bothering you to try and uh, try and update when you don't, when you don't want the Git-based updates. Alrighty. Um, our next question is a follow up from the previous question, and that's uh, Don't the local sites lose their custom modules in Composer? Um, so, depending on how you set up Composer, will depend on how much additional customization that uh, how you set up Composer will sort of affect the answer of this. I would say, in general, if you're using Composer to manage your site, it typically makes sense to try to use Composer to manage Drupal, WordPress, plugins, modules, themes, all of the other people's code. It's typically not a good plan to say use Composer to update core, but use like, you know, Drush to update a module because it's just, they're just competing kind of solutions. Um, but it's definitely possible to set it up so you can use Composer to manage all of like the contrib and plugins and modules, but then you can still put whatever your, your own custom code is in the repo. Composer won't overwrite other people, other stuff. It just will like work with the stuff it's managing. So you could like write your own custom module um, that way. There are though, if you're really like bought into the Composer model, we do see people who are trying to write custom plugins and themes for their sites to create a separate Git repo that has just that custom plugin or theme, and then will uh, use Composer to actually call that repo. Composer will be set up initially to work with you know, packagist and like sort of, you know, public Drupal and WordPress projects. But you can set up a package for your own custom uh, GitHub or, or Bitbucket account. We see some agencies do that. But 
you know, your mileage may vary, but there's definitely a few ways to, to sort of get that done. Next question. Are there any differences for custom upstreams between WordPress and WordPress multi-site? Yeah, so that's a that's a good question. I think um, so one thing we didn't talk a whole lot about is that there is a there are other solutions to do multi-sites in Drupal and WordPress. Um, the Drupal solution we think with like multi-site as part of its like core like URL hack kind of system. We're not a super super fans of that here. WordPress multi-site in their hand can make a lot of sense. Like if you've got a scenario where like you've got a university and every student needs a blog, instead of like creating like, you know, 50 you know, 20,000 sites on Pantheon and maintaining all of them with scripts, WordPress multi-site will let you spin up a blog easily for like every one of your students. I think where we see the limits of WordPress multi-site is that once we're talking about having needs that look like, you know, we, we, where we have, we have needs where like the sites should be independent for security and performance reasons, then the multi-site model becomes a lot more brittle. And absolutely when we have cases where we want to do some custom code for the individual sites, like different themes or different custom modules or plugins, then um, multi-site just becomes a nightmare to try to write conditional logic to say, do this for that and this other thing for that. Like those projects get really out of control quickly. So I would say if your use case is just, I want to use WordPress and I want to have everyone have like the same copy of it, WordPress multi-site will work. We support that on Pantheon for our like elite or enterprise kind of use cases because it's definitely requires a lot of resource and attention to get set up correctly. Um, but if you've got cases where individual sites might have more individual needs, custom upstream is a good way to go. And uh, just another addition to that, we don't, uh, as you probably saw when uh, Matt was creating the upstream uh, we don't give you an option for site network as a framework when you create it, but we do support the option. So if that's something you need, get in touch with us and we can help you create that upstream. So an, an upstream that is itself a site network uh, is a slightly different thing than an upstream that is WordPress. So get in touch with us and we'll help that help you get set up with that. All right, we have time for one or two more questions. Uh, we're going to take this next one that is, how do you use Terminus to update a Drupal contrib module in custom upstreams? Using Terminus to update a custom contrib module in the upstream. A Drupal contrib module in custom upstream. Gotcha. So um, typically what you would do, so what you can do with, with um, Terminus is you can actually, or, or use, you can use Drush or WPCLI to actually do some updates to um, a sort of test site that you're working, working on for the upstream. So what we see with agencies that are sort of developing their own custom upstream is what they might do is have one site on Pantheon that's sort of the upstream development site. And that would be an installed copy of Drupal or WordPress. It would be running um, a sort of test, test set of content. And what you can do is sort of use that as a place to like, you know, test your update. So you can say, look, a new plugin update comes out, a new module update comes out. You update it first to your like individual Pantheon site that has the, um, that, that using Drush, that to have the update. And then once that looks good, you can then merge that commit into your GitHub, and then all of your other sites will sort of pick that up. And I think that's a good plan if what you're looking to do is, you know, bundle a lot of different plugins and modules together, instead of just saying, oh, a new version of panels comes out, let me just go into this GitHub, download a new thing, and just like commit it to the upstream. I might be running a, you know, a test copy of it first where I'm actually doing the updates and then I can move that over. So I think if this is something that you're looking to sort of maintain, setting up a Pantheon site to do tests and of new stuff first uh, can help you really like A, use some of those toolings like Drush and WPCLI to update it, but also give you a chance to sort of check out all the components together to make sure the new version of panels doesn't conflict with the version of page manager or whatever, whatever other things you have. I'm going to follow up on that WordPress multi-site question. It's, can I manage WordPress single and multi-site in the same upstream if there's no special needs for either? Manager. Uh, no, you cannot. You could probably use the same repository, um, and then anything you uh, push will get applied to both. But because the upstream indicates to our system uh, 
whether it's one or the other, and we need to know which it's running as, the upstream itself, you need to have two separate upstreams in the system. Um, again, it could probably point to the same Git repo. So, you know, you're, you're managing it the same, but uh, it would be two upstreams that you create within the system. All right, we're going to take one more because we've had a couple of these questions, and that is, how do we do an empty upstream? Um, okay, so uh, one thing that we've shown a lot of cool stuff with the upstreams, um, but one of the other things that you can do with upstreams is you can actually use it to, to totally sort of do exactly the, like the opposite of what we're talking about, which is you can set Pantheon up to not use any upstream. Um, and so we have, we provide one of them called GitHub com Pantheon system empty. That's actually a, uh, uh, that has no content in it and won't be updated that you can use if you don't want to have any starting code. So we see this as helpful for agencies that might want to be experimenting with like Angular or React front ends or have just a static HTML JavaScript site they want to deploy on Pantheon. They like the tooling on Pantheon, they like the integrations, but it's not actually a CMS. So in the past, people would have to go to like install a version of Drupal and then just delete it all and then like make their actual site. The empty upstream is a good example. If you've, if you've done this, by the way, for other sites, setting it to empty will get rid of all the update messages that you no longer need. And um, so empty upstreams are something you can just use our upstream as empty. We're not going to change it. And then you could actually spit up sites. Uh, based with uh, with no starting code and no updates, and that can just be a good way to to do stuff beyond Drupal and WordPress on the platform. And it's sort of an, a weird but often helpful way to, to work for uh, for what we're up to. And if you if you're a terminus user, if you do a, a upstreams list command, you'll see a list of all of the upstreams you have available to you, and that'll include all the public ones, including the empty ones. So you can uh, then use terminus to switch a site to empty. Alrighty guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or feedback, please visit our website where you'll find a contact us page and we'll put you in touch with the best member of our team. And make sure you join us for our next edition of Couch Coding in 2018. Have a great week everyone and thank you Ronan and Chaney for a great presentation. See you next year. Thank you.